few weeks ago I produced these outside frames for a, a light switch panel and most of it ended up being the runner because I was really struggling to get a clean edge around the side but we did get enough in the end uh, however inside this frame is a, a laser cut panel which goes in to separate the uh, touch switches so we're going to have a go at combining the two which basically means modifying this mould to recut a new core plate which will have that shape on it I've already gone and drawn that up and it's not terribly complicated so I don't think I'm going to spend too long uh, videoing all of this because it's very similar to what we did before but it's just a three millimeter cutter going around creating this shape and then I need to just take the original surround plate, get rid of these vent wings because we're not going to use those now and just come in and tidy up the edge slightly. So that's all relatively straightforward. The complexity however is we need some holes in our plastic for screwing the PCB on. And we could just leave a couple of holes which means leaving four pins standing proud on the, uh, the new core plate. Alternatively I'm going to have a go at fitting one of these teeny tiny threaded inserts or rather four of them. Now how well that's going to work I don't know. They are actually just about magnetic so I could have a go at embedding some magnets from the back just to see if I can keep these located on the pins. They're great from a, a product point of view because obviously you're not tapping screws straight into the plastic, you're going into a proper threaded insert. The trouble is getting these things into this mould without them falling out is going to be very very fiddly. In fact I suspect I'm going to end up using a pair of tweezers to just drop these over the pins uh, and with or without the magnets if one of them falls out then that part is effectively ruined. So that could be some uh, fun and games, I've not tried it before. Uh, I do know moulders who have used larger inserts and they tend to, to use a, a bowl feed mechanism and a robot comes in, picks them up, puts them onto some pins in the mould uh, and it's not 100% reliable but um, we'll see what happens. So anyway I'm going to cut the plates, put this together and uh, then we'll have a go at moulding and see if this is actually going to work. And by the magic of television, here they are. These are the old bits that I no longer need, so uh, they're out of the way. I've made a new feed plate which has got a couple of very small 1.5mm gates on them and they will hopefully fill from two points here and shouldn't leave too much of a gate vestige but we can soon take those off with a knife uh, and then on the back I've got uh, the main feed off the machine and a small runner and I've just extended a couple of lips on either side so these actually come up and off the plate which just means if this thing gets stuck I can actually slide a fingernail or something under these ends and just pull the thing out but uh, hopefully I won't need them but it's not not critical to what we're doing so add them while the plate is in situ and then this is the main part of the mould. The base plate is essentially the same. Uh, I've cut a new surround and left four really tiny pins sticking up which are just 1.5 millimetres wide, 2 millimetres deep uh, and I can just get these uh, little threaded inserts to drop on there and hopefully when that's in the mould they're not going to fall off and give me a little bit of time to actually get the face plate on. So I've got to very carefully put that together in the mould, drop these on and then drop that on top and hope they don't fall off but uh, I'm going to add a, a few magnets to the inside of these plates just to keep them in in situ when I'm starting to assemble this. Uh, there's a good chance these are actually going to fold over under the pressures of the moulding but uh, only one way to find out so I'll sort out some material, warm the machine up and we'll give that a go and see if we can actually get a decent result. I've only got moulding this and I've managed to get a few running uh, but A it's not filling particularly well so I'm, I'm going to add some extra gates uh, and also it's sticking really badly to the, the core insert as it's contracting around it it's proving really difficult to get the things off so I'll try and add in a few little grab pins in the corners but they're nowhere near strong enough so uh, I've had a bit of a rethink and uh, basically I've reconstructed the mould slightly so the base plate now uh, is just essentially a blank plate that's bolted onto the uh, support plate I've got in the, in the machine the skirt plate surrounds it just as before and then all of the rest of it is now over here on the half that comes apart and if I can pry that 
front section out. Get a suitable screwdriver. There we go. So this core plate now is going to live actually on the other side and it's a pretty tight fit so it's definitely going to come across on this side when I open it. There we go. Uh, and I've added these four guide pins and some guide holes. I've basically recut this plate and I added some magnets as well but I don't think I need them. So this is going to serve a dual purpose because I've obviously got to put these little inserts onto these pins which so far I haven't folded over. So if I load that flat and then drop this on top that's going to lock those inserts in place and they're not going to be able to fall out. So uh, that's all going to go in the mould like that and then a new feed plate that I've cut with uh, a cross frame runner on here and then that's going to live on the back like that and uh, with a bit of luck that will give us uh, a completer fill because we've now got four gates and uh, more importantly everything is going to be attached to that core frame the core plate which uh, is removable and then I've got an idea for getting that out which I'll show you in a minute okay I think I've got them dialed in so here's the moulding coming out of the machine and if I crack that, that should come off nice and easy that's just uh, the runner plate and here's the runner that's the chiller kicking in in the background so if I just pry that apart that will split that off leaving us with a nice clean moulding a little tiny bit of flash but I'm still dialing in the settings and then here is my cunning technique for getting them off of that awkward core plate. It's very scientific but it works. So now I've just got to reassemble, get rid of the runner, put that back on there, that back on there, back in the machine and away we go. Right, well, now I've got the hang of actually moulding them, and they're not too bad, a little bit of flash at the edge, but that will come off. It's uh, very brittle and very thin, so that's not a problem. But the next challenge is, can I actually get some of these teeny tiny inserts to mould? Uh, and this could be a little tricky. There's one. There's two. It's not helping my cycle time. One, get on. There's three. And that one completes the set. Right. So, put that on there. That should trap them all in. And now, with a bit of luck, that will mould over them. Let's have a look if we've got a pearl inside this the runner plate off. It's cracking nicely. It's cracking. And here we go. And look at that. We have some inserts. Wow. Still, still a bit of flash on the back, but if I can catch it in the light, we have got four threaded inserts moulded in. So, get rid of that uh, little bit of flash. I might just have to lower the setting slightly. And I'm picking up a bit of contamination from something, so I may have to purge the machine out before I do these. And here we go. And that looks pretty damn good. I've got four threaded inserts embedded in the plastic and I can see daylight through all of them so that is actually working quite nice it's just a shame I've got this bit of contamination coming through and a bit of sinking on the edge so uh, yeah I might need to just play around with the settings but apart from that they're coming out pretty good and here are some of the results this was Probably about half of what I did yesterday afternoon. Uh, it was quite a long Sunday, but uh, it all came out reasonably well. Uh, there's no real sinking on the front. There's a little bit of spray 
marking where it's going over uh, the thinner sections because obviously it's two millimeters on this main frame uh, and one millimeter over these little uh, stepped covers here so uh, you know, you're know you going to expect some flow uh, asymmetries over these areas but the inserts have come out quite well I was a bit worried that my insert plate was going to fold on me but if I can get that out uh, all four of the pins have survived at least a hundred cycles now I think they have worn slightly by putting the inserts over them but uh, it's it's done pretty well and I think it will do at least a few hundred more so uh, that was a fairly cunning system which seemed quite reliable and my extraction system also proved there we go also proved quite reliable so that just dropped into there and then obviously that fitted over the top and a quick whack with a hammer brought them off so uh, that was another result uh, I think the the gates are, are not terrible they were breaking off from the runner which obviously was sitting on the plate above them like that put that over the white bit you might be able to see it slightly better so that was the the top runner plate and they were just separating and coming off quite well uh, sides are not too bad there's a little tiny bit of sinking in the corner there but otherwise uh, I think that's reasonable so for a very cheap mold and a Sunday afternoon of molding uh, I think we've probably got about a hundred good parts so um, yeah not a bad result maybe give that a, about a nine out of ten I think